five reasons why you should not use peat moss this fall with your seeding or overseeding projects. But wait, the peat moss is gonna tell me when I need to water my newly seeded lawn because it dries out and then I know I need to go out there and water it. Um, really, I think that all of us know that a newly seeded lawn needs to be watered. Just water it two or three times a day. You don't need peat moss to tell you that. All right, so number one reason, peat moss doesn't really add a whole lot to my soil. It's not gonna improve it, it's sterile. So peat moss comes from these peat bogs and areas in the world where it just naturally decomposes over hundreds and hundreds of years and it's basically completely sterile. That's why a lot of people like to use it. It doesn't have any weeds. It doesn't have any fungus or bacteria. So at the same time, it's great to start the seeds, but once it gets past that, that's pretty much where the benefits end. It's not gonna add anything to my soil. It's not gonna improve the life that's in that soil that you need for your plants to thrive. This also means that it takes a long time for it to break down. It takes years. It's gonna be sitting there on your soil. If you're adding it every single year, it's gonna layer up and you're gonna have a very infertile, sterile layer on your soil that takes a long time to break down. I can still see the peat moss in the area behind me above the wall that I seeded several years ago when I dig down to do soil samples. It's still sitting there on the top of the soil just like it was when I put it down two years ago. All right, the number two reason why I'm not using peat moss in my overseeds anymore is erosion. It doesn't really help it. I've seen a lot of YouTube videos that say peat moss adds a great layer to the top of your soil. It's gonna help prevent erosion when you do your seeds and that's what a lot of us do a top dressing for. After we put that seed down, we don't want it to wash and run off. Well, peat moss does not really help it a whole lot. If you've got a flat lawn, it's gonna be fine. If you've got slopes like I do everywhere, peat moss is going to run everywhere, taking your seeds with it. So peat moss is not a really great erosion control when you do seeding. If anybody tells you that peat moss is good at controlling erosion when you seed your lawn, they probably don't have a really sloped lawn. So reason number three, I'm not using peat moss, and this one could be controversial, but it's a good reason why I'm not using it. It's not really environmentally friendly at all. It's not renewable. This is a debatable topic, but from what I've researched, the peat moss takes years and years and years, hundreds if not thousands of years to form in these bogs. It does not get renewed at the rate that we are using it. Uh, these bogs are really important for the environment and provide a lot of great things. So I'm not gonna go into details. It just doesn't seem like something that I wanna use in my lawn or add, especially considering it doesn't really add a whole lot of benefits in the first place. Okay, so reason number four not to use peat moss. It is expensive. You can take that one to the bank, 20 bucks for a bag. Last time I was at my local big box store and these guys that oversee their lawns, most of them are not even the size of my lawn and they're using 15, sometimes 20 bags of this stuff. You can do some quick math and figure out that that's gonna uh, really raise your price of overseeding. You know, take that money instead of investing in peat moss, buy some better quality seed and buy some really good quality starter fertilizer and you'll be really happy that you didn't waste it all on the peat moss. I don't know about you, but spending two or three, 400 bucks on something that doesn't even add any nutrients to your lawn when you overseed it, that doesn't sound like a good recipe for success to me. All right, I could probably go on about this video about why I don't really want to use peat moss or don't like to use peat moss, but reason number five why I don't use peat moss anymore during my overseeds or seeding projects, it is just freaking messy. If you've used it before, unless you get one of those expensive spreaders and that adds to reason number four, which is even more money for a, you know, one, two, three hundred dollar peat moss spreader, um, this stuff just coats your arms. You'll look like you just dove into a, a freaking pool of peat moss. It just gets everywhere. It goes all in your shoes, your mouth, your face, your eyes. It's a mess. Um, it gets all over your concrete. You gotta blow it back off again. Why, why why go through all the trouble and create such a giant mess for something that's really just not necessary? Okay, that was my five reasons why I don't use peat moss anymore. It just doesn't add a whole lot. It's sterile. It doesn't do much to your soil. It doesn't add any beneficial fungi or bacteria or any of that life that we want to add into it. So why use it? What should you use instead? Well, if you overseed, you really don't have to use anything. If you've got a few bare spots, you can throw some compost or topsoil. If you're doing a brand new seeding project, say you smoked out that whole lawn, which also I do not really recommend, then consider adding a really good organic uh, compost. I like the Black Cow product. It's a processed manure. 
It works really good. It's gonna actually add some beneficial bacteria and fungus and other stuff into your soil profile instead of adding something that's sterile and that isn't gonna break down. What about grandpa's favorite seeding straw? So you see all kind of videos saying, oh, don't use straw because it's got weeds or it's got this or whatever. Why do people use it? Because it does work. Straw can help with the erosion, especially the seeding straw, because it has a tackifier built into it. You can also get some uh, mulch that's made that has a tackifier, like a slope master. Those things are all gonna be better options for you if you wanna have a successful seeding. If you've got a really extreme sloped area, you've gone down to bare dirt, then you probably wanna consider something like a seeding blanket that's gonna help and actually prevent the erosion, as well as help to start those seeds for you. All right, that's my five reasons why I'm not using peat moss anymore in my overseeds or fall seeding on my cool season lawns. So please comment down below. Do you love peat moss? Do you hate it? I know it's a love-hate relationship for us lawn YouTubers, and I really wanna thank you for watching the video. And if you're liking the content, please subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.